Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at using a monochromatic um, page or colour scheme to create a simple page in our book. So I'm starting off in my blue Dina Wakeley journal and I'm just gluing down some random collage that I had sitting around on my desk. I'm just using some um, soft gel medium to do that. I'm just tearing up little scraps that I had lying around and popping them onto the page. No rhyme or reason to what I'm using, um, just the fact that they were sort of sitting at the top of my desk. The one thing I am doing, which I don't know why but I quite like the effect, is I'm not actually gluing all my collage right to the edge. I'm leaving a slight border around, which I don't usually do with my artwork, but I thought with this piece that I would actually leave a little bit of white around the edges of the border. So because I want to play with the new Dina Wakeley spray fur, um, I decided I want to work in greens. Greens I don't use very often, particularly in a monochromatic page, so I thought I'd push myself a little bit by using it. I started off with some olive, then I had some evergreen, I've mixed in some aloe, which is like a really pale colour, and now I'm going in with the stencil and just rubbing back. So the reason I did that was you can obviously see a little bit of the stencil impression there and you can see on some of the collage um, where I've rubbed off the paint that you can see that collage peeping through a little bit. So it's just to add a little bit of texture and now I'm spraying on the fur gloss spray through the same stencil and using the same stencil gives that repeat pattern across your page which makes things look a little bit unified. One side sprayed through the the stencil you saw me drip off the excess onto my page and then I actually pressed the excess that was on the, the front of the stencil back onto my page again and you get a, um, a really cool reverse stencil image. Now I'm just going in with a little text stamp I think this is a Prima text thing it's just really fine text anything you've got just to add a little bit of um, black and detail into the background and I've also got this little grid stamp, which I think is a Tim Holtz stamp as well. But again, any backgroundy stamps that you've got will work. If you don't have background stamps, think outside the box. You could obviously doodle on here with your pen. You could get some paint and the, you know, the top of a lid and dip it into the paint to make those circles, whatever you've got. Now, the sprays that I'm using are the Dina Wakeley Gloss Acrylic Sprays. Um, so it's like a really fluid acrylic paint. If you didn't have them, uh, you could use acrylic ink or you could just water down acrylic paint to get a sort of similar translucent effect. And for the stenciling, obviously, instead of spraying through it, you could just um, stencil over the top. You know, and there's no rhyme or reason to, you don't have to use the particular things, just, you know, use the inspiration. So now, once I've finished doing my background, I want to add a little bit of detail into it. I'm just going in and drawing some leaf shapes. And, you know, these are really, really simple <laughs> to, to draw. Um, I don't draw very often on my artwork, but I will draw stuff like this that, um, you know, it's just basically lines and loops. I, I can cope with that. I'm just using my black Posca paint pen to do this. And this is just the base for my... Um, doodling. I suppose I'm going to add stuff over the top of this but I just wanted to have a little bit of a base. Now there are stamps and stencils with leaf patterns like this so again if you didn't want to hand draw this on you could use a stencil to do the same um, or you could use stamps and then colour over the top of the stamps which is something I often do as well. So now I'm going in with my white gel pen. Uh, usually I use my fine white Posca paint pen but um, that had died, so I've, I've resorted to my white pen, our gel pen, which is working quite successfully um, um, over the top of everything, which is good. And for a change, I'm actually being quite careful with how I am drawing in my lines. Usually I'm really, really squiggly with them, but in this case, I'm actually taking a little bit of time. And the reason for that is I actually wanted to leave a little bit of a black border around the outside, so... Um, it had the white really popped off the page. I'm now going back in and just doing a little second loop, just adding some interest to the, the page as I'm going along. 
obviously I was enjoying this, so I went back in and I was adding stems to it as well. <laughs> Once you get into the hang of um, doodling on your page, you kind of keep going. So now I am going in and adding some extra mic making with my white pen. When I've done a background, I find that the sort of last sort of thing I do on my page is adding the contrast of black and white. Um, and you only need little bits of it to really make your page sing. So when you've done um, your mic making and you're happy with it, you have to make the choice of whether you're going to just leave it as it or if you're going to add something to it. And it's always a hard choice to make. I often find though on particularly backgrounds or pages like this, I kind of like to keep it simple and I usually end up putting some sort of quote on the page, which is what I ended up doing with this page. But obviously I wanted to keep mic making for a minute, so <laughs> I'm going back in. You can see a lot of the mics are echoing um, the stuff I've got in the background. So those little crosses sort of echo the stenciling I've got. It also echoes the... Um, little hash stamp that I had there or the, the grid stamp I had and obviously those dots black dots are very similar to the um, black and white dotty paper I had in the collage in the background so it helps again with that repetitive nature of a repeated nature of um, the symbols on the page so now I'm going through trying to find a quote that I wanted to use these are some collage tissues from Dina Wakeley that I had that I was thinking oh I could use these um, instead of having to think about writing a quote and, and so on. They're very good time savers but in the end once I cut it all out I think I decided oh no I had to keep it. Um, quite often I'll sort of cut them out and then decide I don't want it but in this case I did. So what I'm doing is just using some matte gel medium underneath my collage tissue and then putting some over the top and I'm doing it with my finger but you could obviously do it with a paintbrush. You can see the joy of the collage tissue though is because it just dissolves into the page and um, you just get the printing on the top which is fantastic. So you know it looks like you've hand lettered it or you've stamped it on when in fact you've just glued down a piece of tissue. So now I'm just going in and outlining the outside with some white gel pen just to again push that out of the background. It's a bit hard to see on screen but when you in the close-up you'll be able to see it a little bit more. And underneath I decided I wanted to do some journaling about that quote and what it meant to me at the time. And sometimes I'll do this on my page and sometimes I won't. If things are really speaking to me or if I really just need to get stuff off my chest I will often add some journaling in and for this piece in particular I wanted to explain why I chose and you are sensitive and that's okay so that really scribbly writing underneath is me just emptying everything in my brain and letting it rip so in the close-up you can see how much texture um, and layers there are on the page and just how those sort of all play together but you've still got the focal image of the text and the um, branches in the end. So I hope you have a go at playing with just a monochromatic colour scheme and create a really simple page like this. Until next time, bye for now.